Hello, my name is Joshua Kasson and today we're going to be going over some of the basic functionality of the particle editor, editor in UDK. This is the May 2011 version, but we're going to start just by opening it up. So here I am in the content browser and I'm just going to go to new particle system. And I can name whatever I want, but now I'm just going to leave it as is. And we'll open it up. And here is our particle editor. Now, as you can see, we already start by having a basic particle with a default material right here. But before we get into that, I'm going to go over some of the basics of the toolbar at the top. So right here, this blue button will reset the sim, the simulation that's being run right here in the, in the particle editor itself. Right here, we'll restart the simulation in the level itself. If, you're, if you've placed this particle in your level, this will restart that. This will open up the content browser, so you can actually find something. This will be useful later on when you're trying to pick what material you like to place for this in. This will save the thumbnail of the image in the content browser. Um, orbit mode is simply used for a different functionality in the orbit menu. Um, toggle motion will simply do this. I'll allow you to see your particle effect in motion, run it, running around a circle, useful for flame effects and the like. Um, the change view button is very good if you wish to simply see it in form. It works a lot like it does in the level editor itself. You can set it to a wireframe, lit, unlit mode. Basically it has that same functionality. In fact, this window itself more or less works exactly the same way as the level editor does. Um, so by moving it the same way, right click, you go in and out, left click, turn around, zoom in and out by holding the mouse button. Um, this button, the toggle bounds button, will let you see. So we'll stop it there. Will let you see the actual bounds of the particle effect itself. Um, these change as the particle effect moves around, but by right-clicking it, you can set it to fixed bounds, causing it to become a static square boundary. Um, Post-process button is used for more finished effects, and will not really be talked about too much. But basically, if you have certain effects that you've manipulated within the particle editor, this will turn those on and off. Um, toggling the grid. You can stop the simulation that's playing, so we the pause button and replay it. You can make it run slower, down to 1%, or make it run at full speed. You can set it to loop, which will not really be visible on this, but if you have like an explosion or something, this will cause that to loop. And this will cause it to play in real time. Um, you can affect the background color with this button. Which will be useful depending on what kind of image you have. For now, I think we're going to stick with black. And you can create a wireframe sphere. Another thing that's being used for to create um, a general sense of scale with your particle. So what this is, is it asks you what what is the radius of the speed you wish to create, and it starts at 150 units. If you have there, you can now have you know, boundaries and grid, and now you have your particle system wrapped up in the sphere. Now, these next two buttons are the undo and redo buttons. These work as they do in any other editor, and no need to go into too much detail. Um, these set of buttons, however, control the LOD. What LOD is, is say you have a particle system that you want to be able to view from far away, but you do not want it to show as much detail from a far distance. You can set to show different different things from different distances. That's what LOD is. So you want to add a new LOD here, and you'll be able to move between it and have a different setting at a difference that you can set in here. And that is basically the toolbar in a nutshell. Some of these things are not be using very much. Most of them generally affect how things are displayed in the preview window. Now we're going to be talking about these four windows right here. The preview window works much as it would in any other level editor. You have a grid, you can turn it on and off. Um, it displays it. It shows you what it looks like in the game itself. You can pause it and play it. It controls just as the main engine does. Now, this window here is the module window. This is really where you're going to be doing most of your heavy lifting. Um, the module window is basically where you'll have all the high level controls to how your particle functions. Um, the way a particle actually is made is it essentially takes a single material 
from the content browser and then adds a bunch of modules to it. For instance, this module controls how many spawn. This module controls what direction they go in and how fast. This module affects the color. This one affects the size. And there are a large number of these modules you can add to them. You can also add more modules from here by right-clicking within the emitter itself and then finding the module looking for and selecting it. You can leave them as such. Disable or enable them by clicking the check mark. Um, you can also add new emitters um, by right by right clicking outside and clicking new particle emitter. Particle systems on the whole are composed of a series of emitters, each with its own set of modules. You will find that in complex particle systems, you will have a sequence of emitters, each with their own long list of modules. In order to affect those modules, you go down here to the properties window. Within the properties window, you will have access to what the individual n numbers behind the modules are. If you want to affect the initial velocity and change it to go left instead of up, you can change this value sitting on the y-axis, and now these values will fly forward on the y-axis. If you want to go the opposite direction, change that to a negative, and that will go the other direction. Obviously, there's a lot you can do with this, and we'll talk about it more in a different tutorial. Um, this window as a whole is called the property window, and it will show you the property of the module that you currently have selected. Lastly, we have the curve window editor. Um, this is useful for certain types of variables um, called curved variables, or curved constants, curved uniform. Um, those we'll talk about in a different tutorial. Basically, you'll be able to, d to set a variable alongside a timeline of how long the life lives. For instance, if you want to change the size of an explosion from its top to its bottom, um, you can do this in the curve editor. And that's really all there is to the parallel system itself. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different ways you can tweak it. It's a lot of math and a lot of art. But basically, from this point out, you can experiment or look at some of the tutorials we have. Thank you.